Hi guys, Stu here from Main Street Mower. Today we're talking bar chain sprocket 101. You probably own a chainsaw and chances are you're not very good at buying a chain. By the end of this video, you'll know what a sprocket is, you'll know what pitch is, what gauge is, how many drive links are needed, where to find that information, and about picking out the right chain. Let's get started. A lot of people go to Home Depot or Lowe's, they grab a chain that says 16 inch, they go home and it doesn't fit on their chainsaw. Well, at our store, we have five different 16 inch chains and they're all different shapes, widths, and spacings. All you need to know about your chainsaw, your bar, and the chain that's on your saw is what is the pitch, that is the spacing of the chain and how it is gonna fit into the drive sprocket. What is the gauge? And that is the thickness of the drive tooth. The drive tooth actually sits down in the groove of the bar and you want it to match the spacing of the bar properly. And then finally, the amount of drive links it takes to span the circumference of the bar and the sprocket that sits right here. Now your bar right here has all of that info if it's a steel. It's an Oregon, it's a little more of a cryptic code that's on the bar and it's going to be a little more difficult to find your matching bar and chain. This first number is the part number of the bar itself. This number here is the amount of drive links. Those are the teeth that sit down in the groove. Then this is the pitch and this is the gauge of the chain that would match this saw. Okay, what does all that mean? First of all, pitch. Pitch is the way that these drive teeth fit into the sprocket. They're a perfect fit. Over time, a chain does wear a groove out in your sprocket, and sometimes it's so clean that it looks like the factory did it that way, like it's supposed to have that groove. But as you can see, this sprocket has no groove carved out of it. Now, if I took a chain that had the wrong pitch, a 16-inch chain of a different size, and I went to marry it up with that sprocket there, this is what we would see. See the teeth don't drop down into the groove properly. So this chain ends up slipping around the sprocket and wearing that sprocket out really quickly. Just, it's not gonna feel right. Basically, you have these little round rivets that hold all of your links of your chain together. Two of them are spaced close together and then the next spacing is wider. So what you do is you're taking the average width. So you could measure from the midpoint of one rivet, skip a rivet, measure to the midpoint of the third rivet, and then divide that distance by two, and that's your pitch. That's gonna tell you that this drive link is gonna fit perfectly into your sprocket. Now gauge is easy. Gauge is the thickness of the drive tooth. That's like if you took a caliper on it and you measured the thickness, that would give you gauge. I actually have tools such as these for measuring pitch and gauge. And we could take a chain and we can pull the drive tooth out and we can stick it in this slot and find out which one of these it fits tightly in, which this one is 0.043, which is code one. Steel manufacturers chain and they put it on a spool such as this. They sell this in 25, 50, and 100 foot quantities. And there are some dealerships that make all of their own chain. They unroll this out, they get their 55 links, they're counting this inner drive link, they punch out a connecting rivet, and then they bring it back around and they roll a rivet in. Others buy what they call pre-cut loops. So these are loops that have been cut at the factory and boxed and they're ready to go. It is much less expensive to buy it this way, but then you have the, the element of labor. So if I were to line up all the sizes of chain that would fit on a steel saw, if we went back 20 years ago, that I would only have three chains here. I'd have a chain that's for the smaller saws, the chain that's for the medium saws, and the chain that's for the bigger saws. Changing the size of the cutter drastically changes the performance of the saw. So steel continues to innovate and bring us new chains that are bigger and last longer, like the 404 that's on an 880, or smaller, like 
the quarter pitch Pico that is on the battery saws and a lot of the pole saws is also on the MS-151T. And this chain is super tiny. Cuts like a laser, but it does wear out quickly because if you think about it, all of your friction is focused on a tiny little tooth. So Steel added two more chains and today there's now seven sizes of chain. Now within the seven, there are different shapes of tooth and a different shape of tooth will give you different characteristics like more aggressive cutting, cutting on the nose, less vibration, safety, those kind of elements. When you read a chain at the bottom of the box here, the two is pitch number two. And there is a key of what pitch number two means. The six is gauge number six. So it's the sixth tooth thickness that steel makes. The RS is rapid super. This is describing the shape of the cutter. This is a very aggressive cutter. It's yellow in color, which means that it's closer to red, which there is no red, but green is safe, yellow is more professional. And then it takes 68 drive lengths to span an 18 inch bar on an MS-250. Now, you can get that number two and that number six off of your chain. If you look closely, right here, there's a number two right there. The second number, the six, is, has to deal with how wide this tooth is that drops down in the bar. And it has a six right down here. So just by holding this chain, I can look and I can see a two and I can see a six. I know it's 26 and I lay it out like this and I line it up so I can count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 20, two, four, six, eight, 30, two, four, six, eight, 40, two, four, six, eight, 50, two, four, six, eight, 60. 2, 4, 6, 8, 68. So on the chain, I can read a 2, and I can read a 6 in the gauge, and then I can count 68 drive lengths, and that's how I find the chain that I need. And then also, this little yellow link here corresponds to the yellow of the chain, so that would identify it as a more aggressive chain. Okay, a little bit about sprockets. Let's say you have an MS-194T. This is a climbing chainsaw. It is available for purchase with a 12, 14, or 16 inch skinny chain. That's a green label, it's a safe chain. And then it's also available with those same three chains in a yellow label, a more aggressive. So a classic example of that is the 61 is six pitch, one gauge, and it is only available in a green chain. So this is a safer chain but maybe you wanna upgrade it and be able to do a plunge cut and get a little bit longer uh, wear life out of your chain. Both of these chains have the same pitch, so they're both gonna fit on the same sprocket because this sprocket is a 3 8 pico pitch. It's the, the number six pitch. But bar-wise, they have a different gauge. This one's 61, this one's 63. So the bar that you originally got on it here, the groove in the bar is gonna to be too skinny to run this. So in order for you to switch from this chain to this chain, you'll have to replace your bar and your chain. One more example of that. Let's say that you purchase a HT-105 pole saw and it comes with this quarter pitch chain. This chain is awesome, I love this chain, but let's say you don't like it, because some people don't, because what they're cutting is sandy and it's wearing this chain out and this chain's a little more expensive and you wanna switch from this chain to a 6144, a chain that's this characteristics with 44 links, the pitch of this chain does not match the sprocket. So in this case, you're gonna have to change your sprocket and your bar and chain. Okay, so let me show you this bar. So this is a very common 16 inch bar. It comes on an MS-180, 170, and quite a few other saws. And it runs this chain right here, the 6155. The pitch is the number six pitch. The gauge is a number one and it has 55 drive lengths. Give you kind of a bare look of what a chain looks like on a chainsaw. So it's gonna go on here like this. And then this is gonna be here like this. Attached to the motor, running this chain. Let's say you wanna upgrade your barn chain, and you wanna switch from a green label 
to a yellow label like this, what are you going to have to change? You're not going to have to change this because this is the same pitch as this. They both start with a six and that is describing the spacing in between the teeth here. So same pitch, your chain's going to fit on that. You're not going to have to change your sprocket. Now the next number, the three, is the gauge. This is a thicker chain and the problem is going to be this chain is not going to fit in the groove of this bar. Visually you can see it looks a little thicker. And when you go to put it in, you could force it in, but it's not moving freely. It's going to put way too much resistance on your saw. So in order to switch to the 63 chain, you have to switch your bar to a 50 gauge bar. All right, one last thing I want to touch on in this uh, bar chain sprocket 101 would be that if you go to pull up a diagram for your chainsaw and what sprocket goes on it, in some cases, you have very few options. You know, in this case, it may show you three different sprockets that are available. In this case, it may only show you one. Then at about this point, which is the MS250, the 251, you start seeing a lot of options. And it's because you could change your spur sprocket out, change the pitch back to this chain, or change the pitch to this chain. You can also switch between a six tooth 7 tooth and sometimes an 8 tooth sprocket. You could have an MS250 and you want to run this bar and chain and by changing your sprocket to this spacing you would be able to switch your bar and chain down to this or you may also want to go up. You're going to start seeing sprockets like this and sprockets like this. This is a spur sprocket and this is what's on all the homeowner level of steel product and a rim style sprocket like this is what you would find on every commercial saw. This is a rim sprocket kit. So say you bought an MS391. It's a pretty big saw. It's considered farm and ranch. It's not considered commercial. And it came standard with this. But you're doing a lot of cutting and you're wearing sprockets out and you want to switch to this style of sprocket design. You could buy a kit like this. And this is everything that would come in the package. And it would allow you to take this sprocket off your saw and then put this sprocket on. And then whenever this wears out, you come in, you buy a new one for like $8, and you slip that on, quick and easy. If you notice printed on the sprocket itself, it gives you the pitch of the sprocket. That's gonna tell you what pitches this is gonna marry up with. 325, the code for that is two. So any chain that starts in a two, this is gonna fit. And then you see a dash seven, and this one is dash eight. Eight is gonna give you speed going to give you more speed and less power, less torque at the chain. This is going to give you more torque, less speed. I mean, we're really only talking a, a tooth. It would be a minor change in either direction. Most people wouldn't even notice the change from a 7 to an 8. This would be for the very particular. And I would say if you went to your dealer and you were trying to buy this and they only had this, you'd probably be okay with this. But it's cool that you have so many options. All right, guys, thank you for staying tuned to the end. There is so much more to know about bars and chains, but that's all we can put into one video for today. So let's just do this in doses, all right? If you wanna know more, let us know that you wanna know more and we'll dig a little bit deeper. Just subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, drop us a comment down below. And meanwhile, switch to one of these two videos and you might enjoy it even more. Thank you so much for watching.